This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And I feel like I'm a little out this way. Let me, let me fix that up a little bit. It surprised me last week, too. Hello, hello. There we go. That feels a little better. Uh, John Chichilla is with us in the studio back after his travels. Thank you, Brian Crawford, for filling in last week. Go check out pghmuseums.org. But he's here. Like I said, Big Pink International Star. <laughs> We're a John Chichilla. country countrywide traveler. Countrywide traveler I back went in. He flew in la- from last week. From I went in Pittsburgh, d- Chicago, Redmond, Redmond, L.A., Charlotte. Whoa! Pittsburgh. You like did the you rounded the country in like seventy two hours. In seventy two hours, I left. I, I flew out of Pittsburgh on s- the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. My flight was at like noon, Oof. um, and then I flew back. Tuesday night on like an uh, eight, what was it? Seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock out of Redmond around the world. Jeez. Um, and then landed back in Pittsburgh at 11. Plane switches or staying 11. on the plane? No plane switches. Oof, I don't know which is terminals. Worse. The whole thing. LA was, LA was a rough, I felt like that was the roughest. Um, not from a rush perspective, but from a, how you get from terminal to terminal. Oh, you actually had to go to a different terminal in LA? Yeah, and it was on via bus. Like yeah. it was via bus inside the airport. Oh, like, really? I didn't think it you was could weird. get I didn't think you could get Well, I only do Southwest and there are only one terminal. So Okay. That must Mine was weird. actually, I think American Airlines and it was stretched across two terminals. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they probably have a connector. Wow. Well, um, I'm, well, I'll get enough of that here in a few months here, Chilla. <laughs> so, some international travel in my near future. International? Well, international. Well, Canada. Ah. <laughs> in north of Toronto, I think I'm going. Anywho, uh, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. Producer Misser, Missy is here keeping things. Uh, uh, we did not hook up her microphone, though, because we're recording some other stuff. Uh, but <laughs> go check out everything at awesomecast.com. Email us awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com where Missy will hit you up and say hi and stuff. Uh, tweet us at awesomecast. Facebook us awesome, awesomecast on the uh, Facebook page. And we have a great group where uh, there's a lot of great conversations and stories being shared throughout the week. And uh, also, we um, also uh, we, we, I asked Chilla questions about things I'm going to buy. <laughs> it's a thing that happens. So it's my, it's my personal tech support. Um, and you guys can be a part of that too. Subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. You can share from there. And you can also ask your uh, Speak of Home Automation that we were just recording our Christmas Eve uh, edition about. Uh, you can ask your Google Home and your Google Music uh, podcast and uh, Amazon Echo to play your awesome cast on TuneIn. And here's a fun thing I do. Here's a little tip for you. Um, I say uh, I set up a good morning G and uh, I say, hey, good morning. Mm-hmm. And uh, it'll play. It'll tell me the weather, tell me what's on my calendar, and I'll play a podcast of my choice every day. And uh, you can set your awesome cast on there or latest episode of whatever on there. And that, that's you should a, definitely be playing the awesome put, cast could on Definitely there. be awesome cast. Mm-hmm. Um, but can you set it up where it like has a specific podcast that's, each day? That's a, well, yeah, that's what I'm wondering too. Because I set up a day like a daily tech one, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, well, what do I do if I listen to like multiple every day? You know, that's, that's that's maybe that's an if this then that we can set up or something. Or does it know like if you're listening with the the Google? Music app? Or, Does it know you've finished that or it can start or where you left the off? The answer is you can just subscribe to the Sorgatron Media Master Feed. Then you got a great Sorgatron Media podcast like every day. There you go. Basically every day. Mostly every day you got something new. Whether it's us, Wrestling Mayhem Show, Fishing Without Bait, our friends at Thrifty Podcast, Bardic Mystery Tour, Old Pittsburgh Sports in the chat room representing right now. Uh, you can do that too. 
Uh, also, every Tuesday, we are here live, except for over the holiday break, on Facebook Live for the awesome cast at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you're catching us on one of those other outlets, uh, please hop over to the Facebook Live if you're with us live right now. Or if we're on the replay feed or somewhere else, you can uh, uh, you can hit us up and, and tell us what you think about what we're talking about on the show. Uh, tweet us at AwesomeCast with the hashtag AC474. Thank you, audio partners, 405 Media, the405media.com, and postindustrial.com, helping spread the awesome cast through their platforms as well. Thank you so much. And thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast at the Coffee Club $5 level, our friends Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen. And at the Fan of the Show $1 level, Michael Fedor and pghmuseums.org. Thank you so much, guys, <laughs> for supporting the show. You guys can, too, at patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Chilla, you, you mentioned Redmond, and of course you had to find and uh, play, play, play with some toys while you're out there, right? Yeah, so they actually have, um, so we went to the executive briefing center, mm-hmm. which I don't know if you're at Microsoft, let's yeah, clarify. At, yeah. At Microsoft, um, Microsoft's campus in Redmond is like a town, mm-hmm. um, over a hundred buildings. Um, just like I imagine when I watched antitrust, pro- bigger, much bigger, um, over a hundred buildings. Um, they have multiple banks <laughs> on site. <laughs> on site, uh, they have they have multiple banks on site. They have like an outdoor store, like an almost like a mini REI. If you've ever been in an REI, um, they have like their wireless store that has like all the carriers in there. Mm-hmm. They have, but no longer mm-hmm. Windows Mobile. No, there's no, I don't no, I don't nope. think so unfortunately. Maybe maybe they have like an homage. They well here. The so, phone that was. So funny enough, I wish I, I should have sent you these pictures. So they have a museum. Really? So I have a picture. Here, I'm gonna send you this one too. Um, if I can find it real quick. Uh, to, to, to explain how big the campus is, I'm gonna send you this. Oh and live airplay on the show sorry about this and this um so to explain how big the campus is and their their concern with people's health um they were worried about their employees drinking too much sugar filled pop Mm -hmm. or even sugar free pop that they worked with a local um vendor that now makes them their own all natural energy drink. No way. <laughs> um, so yes, you can. F- that is that is um, special just for Microsoft. It's called Talking Rain Fusion, and this is a pomegranate blueberry mm-hmm. edition. It's an energy water. Uh, let's see, caffeine, B vitamins, antioxidants, zero calories, non carbonated. Yep. Oh. It, it was pretty tasty too. Oh. Um, You're literally drinking the Kool Aid. Yes. And then <laughs> now now pick up the so in the museum mm-hmm. if you there's a picture of I think the original mm-hmm. prototype Xbox. This is the one that Bill Gates uh showed off at the first like uh uh press conference, right? Yep. Where the one where the Xbox is actually in the shape of a giant X. Mm-hmm. They have an they have like an old school wow. Mac S E. Like the all in one Mac. Oh, it was real really? small, had like the nine inch black and white uh-huh. with an I don't know if the discs, the, the three and a half inch floppies are in there, but with the Mac office for Mac. Oh, I'm like, why do they have a boxed, Mac in there? Box stuff. Um, okay. They have a whole area back in the back that's all live streaming. There are people um, green screened on campus just doing live Twitch recordings. They're paid employees. Wow. Um, Wait, Twitch or Mixer? I'm sorry, Mixer. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> so guys. they have people in-house doing Mixer streams that help just propel that, right? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, they've um, also had, they used to, what was that, Channel 9 or something that they used to do? That was like the in-house, like... It was like their in-house TV broadcasting, yeah, yeah. public access. Um, but uh, one of the things we got to go to was they have like a innovation center. Mm-hmm. Um, so where that's where I got to wear the HoloLens, and they showed where 
you know, you could throw on the hollow lens, and if you were there, he is. Wanted there to he is fix right something. There. This way. Um, that looks a lot cooler than so you see. Like... Yeah, if you and I was impressed with how big the viewable area is. If you go to the other one, it's me fixing a so we... I love that we can see. And I, and I, thank you for doing these in motion uh, yes. pictures, by the way, because I can press on it and you can see you, you taking take a picture, picture of yourself so behind you on the screen. Mm -hmm. So here's another one where you're looking at a motor that's sitting in the corner. Um, and I was actually kind of going through the instruction manual on how to fix it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it actually was in front of me three-dimensionally and I could kind of walk around it. Yeah. There were buttons I could press and I could mm -hmm. pull the gears out. It was super cool. Um, the other one was they had kind of... So they, what they do all over the Innovation Center is they have like an area that's in, industrial and that was kind of like to take apart the engine with the hollow lens. Mm -hmm. They have an area that's... Um, video game focused where there was like a guy on the green screen and they had a bunch of mixer stuff and they had all that on display. They had an area that was like a doctor in a hospital doctor's office. They had an area that was a, you know, their vision of the future of like a coffee shop. And that's where if you go to the table and I'm, I'm playing on the table, um, you could go up and order something Tables like this. At it airports. would, dispense a little hockey puck that was representative of a cup like of coffee. This at airports. Um, mm -hmm. When you put it down on that table, it would identify Tables what like it this was. At airports. It could track you around the store. So if you went into an area you weren't supposed Maybe to be in, waitress when, um, it would alert uh, you. Were trying to get to our next um, it was it, it just, when, uh, this we is kind of our next, next step. Like This Tables is all like this fully functional. Mm -hmm. Anyone can do this. They actually had a mock-up of a Kroger's in the corner where they had product on the shelves and they could actually the if you see where Best Buy now has like all of their pricing is on that little L C D that they can update magically remotely. Oh, I haven't seen much of that actually. So it's like a it almost looks like a e Oh wait, no I have, yeah. It's an E ink screen. Okay. Um so that's all I mean no one's walking around to flip those things around, right? Mm -hmm. They're just mm -hmm. sending data down to it. They actually had those up, and then they actually had under the things like they had a it was a things of chips, and there was probably a four inch high banner at the bottom of each shelf, and it was they could run advertising across it, they could do all kinds of stuff. Um, so that was pretty cool, and, and they they told me I was allowed to talk about this and promote it, so. Um, this, this is not some super big secret. Um, I don't know how you actually get invited to there as part of the public, but, um, it was a super cool experience. Um, just seeing, you know, all of the things in there are partnerships that they've created and they've actually, they kind of, it's from my understanding, they, they either do it right there on site or in kind of like an offsite location they mock everything up for the company, prove it out, like the Kroger kind of concept. Mm -hmm. They prove it out, and then that company rolls it out. So, I mean, people have seen this. This exists somewhere. So, we don't have a Kroger so, here. So, to this see it, is so. this is something that you know, you know, and you're you're there on behalf of uh, Big Bank International, yes. right? So, you, it's kind of come here, see what we're working on. Maybe we can work with your giant company to implement something like this with you in a partnership you know as a vendor or whatever whatever angle that is that I mean, makes the, sense the, right so the cart from the nfl and the mm -hmm. whole nfl thing was over in one of the corners you could play with the cart you could play with the teleprompter I'm not, I'm not familiar with i have been watching football this season what are they doing because i remember this has been around for a while so okay. the nfl uses surface um yeah yeah it's a microsoft partnership oh, yeah um the coaches the um, players, referees, whatever, they all have Surface tablets. They have a large cart that's used to keep the devices charged, keep them powered up. Mm -hmm. Obviously, depending on where they're at in what game, um, the cart actually has like heating and air conditioning <laughs> built into it to make sure that the ambient temperature inside the cart is correct. Um, keeps them charged, keeps them synced. Um, all of that kind of stuff. So they, and then they use it as, as a telecaster, like telestrator where you can like circle like a, a player and draw the lines and make pretty pictures. 
Um, and they had that hole set up in one of the corners. They had a thing, and I'm guessing it's kind of like a Top Golf. If you've ever been to a Top Golf, mm-hmm. um, but it's I think all, some people in the chat are familiar with that place. But it's all virtual, mm-hmm. so they have you tee up. Like you go over and you get a golf club and you put your golf ball down um, and you swing the golf club and hit the golf ball and it slams into a um, screen Mm -hmm. that has the picture of the fairway and the ball then take the, the video then takes over and shows you where your ball went and tracks the trajectory then from the sides. So the golf balls, have all these little lines all over them. They play it back at like a hundred hundred frames per second. So you can see your complete form. It can measure the spin of the ball, how fast the ball was moving, like all of this information about what just happened. Super, super cool. So you got to go to the Microsoft playground for a while. Uh, yeah. That tour was probably about an, yeah. uh, about an hour. You get about an hour in there. Huh? Um, very, very cool. That's awesome. Well, while you were there, I was uh, watching television. Uh, last night, or I guess two nights ago, I watched it last night, or yesterday. or Yeah, it was last night. I don't know. What day is this? Is it Christmas Eve yet? Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> I got to, get, I got to uh, catch up on the finale of uh, Silicon Valley. I won't play this because I'm sure we'll get taken down by Time Warner. Um, and it's, oh, geez, what was it? Seven seasons they did this thing? No, it wasn't even seven. Six seasons. Um and how much of Silicon Valley have you been watching? I watched like some of season one, and mm-hmm. then I'll be honest with you, I I lost track of it. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things I know I'm going to get back to one it's, day. It's nice because they're not long episodes, so I, it, I have HBO to go. Mm-hmm. So it's probably going to be one of those this summer. Now that all the seasons are there, mm-hmm. um, I can just watch it end to end. While there's nothing new coming to TV. Well, it was always like interesting because we watched it and I remember, you know, I think the first season they ended with the, um, oh, tech, is it the tech crunch um, conference or something? The pitch fest that they do. And I was like, this feels like a pitch thing that I've witnessed. You know, that I've been, you know, either seen online or seen here in Pittsburgh at these demo days and everything. And it, it just continued to grow and everything. Um, so it, it was really, it was really, it was a, it was a fun series for that plus it's mike judge and i love the one conversation i was i was i was listening to on a podcast was you know basically one of the reasons they're ending it is um real life has kind of superseded this Mm -hmm. (laughs) like the the industry has gotten um a little crazier than what the series is doing like there was a lot of stuff this this year about ethics and technology and everything so it's getting kind of heavy but Mm -hmm. in that fun mike judge way um so it, it, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing to see that path and that startup path and that glorified, you know, starting up in a garage thing and how far it goes uh, kind of situation. So um, I, it just uh, it was a cool tech thing that I, I feel kind of got big. I felt like there was a lot of pretenders. I mean, we've seen like Silicon Valley reality shows since, right? Mm-hmm. That have been really, really, really horrible. <laughs> so. I thought they did an amazing job the, when I did when I did catch I think I caught most of the first season mm-hmm. and then I can't remember what it was something else came on the air there's only so many hours I have per week for, yeah, for yeah, content yeah. Game of Thrones or something um, right yeah so uh, so pour one out for Silicon Valley and ended I think it ended on a pretty high note for the most part um, and now that it's again all of it's on HBO it's six seasons um, and those range from like I don't know six to ten episodes each probably Mm-hmm. So um, we're checking out, and uh, you can probably binge that in a you know weekend pretty easily at this point. So um, so it, it's one of the things that I've looked forward to, and and it it sucks because it is only like six or seven episodes I think was this season, and uh, it uh, it really kind of hit on all the all the notes for that. So um, I don't know if anybody else is watching that still. <laughs> Uh, Steve's going off about the NFL can't still get, can't get the calls right after seeing the super slow mo replays on the tablets. <laughs> so. No, I'm sure. I mean, there will always be. It's still an interpretation. Mm-hmm. So, oh boy. Uh, anyways, hey, you know what? It was a great experience. 
and does not have a finale. Our friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza here, right up the street here in, uh, I almost said Dormont, no, Beachview, uh, as well as Carnegie, PA, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You can check, check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com. It's how we feel our Tuesday nights for podcast night here on the awesome cast and the wrestling mayhem show. Thank you so much for our friends at slice on Broadway for supporting the show and with uh, some awesome pizza. So go check them out. And thank you. Thanks to them. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chachi is still playing video games. That's your weekly update. There's no surprise there. <laughs> no surprise there. He is still deep in the NES games. I have a feeling the biggest list is probably NES games. He's hitting up load runner. He's hitting up lemmings. I've been playing. Ooh, I yeah. like lemmings. Yeah. I, I re- recently rediscovered Mission Impossible 2, or no, Impossible Mission 2, which never I never understood if it was a sequel to Impossible, Mission Impossible or what. but uh, <laughs> Or just I never heard of the first one. Like I said, he's doing the Dragon Quest and everything. Uh, so always want to give him a shout out. He's doing some good writing over there at thegamejourney.com. So uh, uh, roll along with him. It's <laughs> I know I know he's, he's hitting it deep when I, I, I see his... I see his social media, and there's this picture of his laptop, a Nintendo controller, and like, like wine. <laughs> so that's a good night for him. Uh, let's see. Uh, over on the Awesome Cast group, I know you guys are sharing some things throughout the week here. Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, Prof Pod on the Twitter. Uh, woof. Are you ready for your cheese grater? Have you priced out a cheese grater yet, Chilla? I got your the dream. 50, I got the fifty-two thousand dollar one. You got the fifty-two thousand dollar one. This is the Mac Pro. You can finally order it. Wait, is it finally ordered or is is about to? I think you can is, pre-order. I think you can pre-order as of today. Like you oh can't. I don't think God. you can go to the store. So you can at least configure it. You can configure the um. So there's the rack version, and then there's the straight up and down version with those even more cheese gratery uh look to it. Starting at fifty five ninety nine. And zero cents, just to clarify. Let's see what we can do. We can uh, configure this guy. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, we are starting with an, a 3.5 gigahertz, 8-core Intel ZNW processor, 32 gigs of RAM, Radeon Pro, uh, 256 gigabytes of uh, SSD, all that, and you still only get a quarter terabyte. Wow. Oh, boy. But you get a Magic Mouse. I am... Okay. Well, no, so, in that keyboard... so. I- I guarantee you, I'll be really interested to see mm. based on the the um, the the lowest possible price for the device. Mm-hmm. The keyboard is is a modified black keyboard. Okay, um, it's I think silver with black key. So it's not black on black. It's not silver with white keys. It's silver with black keys. You know, and the, the only way to get that keyboard. Is with is this. with that device. So now it's those, an exclusive those thing. Those keyboards are going to be like three hundred, four hundred dollars. I, I I can I can you, already you see talking on eBay on eBay. Or... <laughs> like that, people are going to be like paying off their device with, or helping to pay for part of the device Jeez. with like, with the keyboard and mouse. That I'm looking at these options, and there's there's a uh, 28 core chip processor that adds sixty three hundred dollars to that base price. Like effectively doubles more than doubles that base price. Yeah, you can also There's, get seven hundred sixty eight gigabytes of RAM. Jeez. I mean, you can bump the the graphics up to a two hundred or up to one hundred twenty. How about another ten thousand dollars for two Radeon Pro Vega two Duos with two by thirty two gigabytes memory each? That's isn't that sixty? It's sixty four, right? Because two by thirty two per the way I read that was per card. Yeah. So you're getting 128 gig of RAM on your video cards. <laughs> I mean, that's more than most people are getting Oof. in their entire computer. Oof. Um, what is an afterburner card? So that's the one that allows you to do the improved compression. Okay. Or just in time compression. Like they were doing during the um, demo. They were and you'll know this better than I do, in Final Cut, mm-hmm. they were adding effects in motion to 8K video. Holy shit. And doing, like, live preview while they worked. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. That would melt my MacBook. 
Like yeah, and like, I have like a new MacBook. Like where you would have to it, the afterburner card is dedicated to like, like Final Cut. Like uh, no, no, it's dedicated to like video compression, video and audio compression and uncompression or, or whatever. Like they had, what's the what's their sound studio? Not GarageBand. Uh, Lo- Logic? Logic. Yeah. Like they had Logic with like mm-hmm. like a hundred. Uh, like a 256 channel orchestra, like and it was probably, just probably all 32 bit. Because yeah. uh, I I know they over work hard. They got one of those nicer uh, next up zooms where they just record everything in 32 bit. You don't have to worry about anything peeking out because you got plenty of headroom. Yeah, to do whatever the hell you want with each track. So it's it's it is like the 4K of uh, audio compression. Yeah, that, that afterburner Jeez. accelerator car is two grand alone. Offloads the decoding of ProRes and ProRes raw video codecs. Yeah, that's because we we do um we do uh, lower end ProRes as our recording on our uh, ninjas when we do live switches, and that's why I bring in just for you know post edit and we throw the graphics in you know do that, and we're just doing 1080. Like we're not <laughs> we're like they not, were pushing and this, 8K. They are like, capable live editing. Yeah, yeah. So and and they are hefty hefty i need 100 gigs i need actually i need probably 150 gigs per show to do something like that mm-hmm. not to mention all the render outs and, and transcoding and, and whatever else that it does jeez jeez if you can afford this you're doing something like that okay if you're doing something like that you can afford this thing right you know i know a lot of us kind of salivate and, and kind of shake our heads at that cost but it's just a. Well, and if you it, it works it, out but but if you look at it specking out mm-hmm. a twenty eight core <laughs> Hold on, Xeon let me do processor, that. Let, me, let me see what that does to the cost. Let's see. Let's go and do that. You're doing that, and you're like, well, I, seven. Ah, grand. let's 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 go conservative. I only put three hundred eighty four uh, gigs of RAM in here. All right, we're only at seventeen thousand dollars. Ah, well, you know what? I only need I only need uh, let's see two of the lower end Vega duo duos. <laughs> Or no, that's just one Vega Duo. Well, oh, you can put one point tera- yeah, one point five terabytes of RAM in that let's thing. Let's see, you'll do that thing, and then uh, afterburner card, and we're at twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. But interestingly enough, I I think the comparable breakdown on this, just based on like the Xeon, isn't a chip you're going to get in a normal mm-hmm. desktop laptop. Hold on, I want to do I want to do a math. I went to do a math problem. We just had a video professional of sorts uh, walk into the studio. They just dropped my camera. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Hey, hey, how much do you think the new Mac Pro is for the base price? High-end video before you put in the card to do 8K effects on it. What do you, what do you think Mac is going to be in charge for that thing? Four grand. Four grand? Try six. That's a start. You didn't even get the four hundred dollar wheels to go on the bottom. No, of I didn't even get the four hundred dollar wheels so I can wheel it across everything. That wasn't my camera that fell, was the, it? The, no, no, it was a hairdryer. It was a hairdryer. Oh, good. <laughs> but the keyboard and the mouse are free. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> the ones that you can you can pawn off on eBay for for four hundred dollars a piece. There you go. Man, it's the most Apple to ever Apple. You know, good for them. You know, this makes up for being twenty thirteen since we screwed up the Mac Pro. So yeah. from from what I've seen the you could it maxes out at fifty two thousand five hundred and ninety nine dollars. I think you may be able to get it higher than that if you go with the rack mount. Jeez. Well, uh, let me let me go a little cheaper for something professional. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm considering this actually for a replacement here in the studio. You know, we we have the Black Magic switcher. That's how we do a lot of this stuff, right? And uh, but also, I have to detach that thing and take it on the weekends when we do wrestling shows, MMA, other events. Um, you know, it's kind of a modulated thing it's kind mm-hmm. of a pain in the if, to me it's a pain in the butt to bring it back in here and plug everything back in right so but there was this thing that and and they were putting this over on mac break weekly last week as a as a <coughs> perfect solution for chilla when you come when you when you say call into to me from studio c mm-hmm. um to studio chill if you will um like you could plug this thing in and pull in like visuals from another camera, your phone, uh, uh, your computer, and send it here. And I was very interested in this. So it's the ATEM. Um, it, it's a Blackmagic ATEM uh, Mini. We have the uh, ATEM 4K production. We are capable of 4K. 4K here in the studio. Well, this, we I have think none of the cameras for it, and this maxes out at 1080, which a lot of you guys do in YouTube and Twitch. 
This actually looks like a really cool thing for that level of thing. And I'm actually looking at it may be enough to do what we do here in the studio, right? Because, uh, you know, the big thing for me is uh, SDIs for when we're putting cameras like 100 feet away and everything. But if everything is like right here, like this could be a nice little replacement for something like that. And there's a complimentary um, application for that device. So it's funny that you, I, I noticed you posted this and I'm like, darn it, I was going to bring that as something cool that I was hoping he hadn't seen before. Oh, well, Max um, Lindsay was talking about it last week. So, and I, and I've been and I didn't listen it, to Mac Break Weekly and I've been I eyeing it for several weeks, actually, because I know it, it's kind of uh, been brought up. Oh, it has built-in green screening. You yes. can actually color correct so, the screen. So the software, the, the software they're talking about is the software that, um, and I, I can't really pull it up here, um, but it, it, it's the the ATEM control software. Um, and there's versions of this. Like I've even done, like you can get a hardware unit that plugs into it that that does the hardware switching. And that's the thing. This would be the buttons. Um, my only drawbacks on it: one, it's HDMI, which isn't a problem for most people, but on my end. It would be an issue. I'd have to get some some adapters and things. It's also only four inputs, so you'd have to kind of do the math on what you do. And I can see us outgrowing that with some of the productions we do in the studio. But still, it's something that and and here's the here's the killer app here that I think we we're talking about this uh, webcam out that's back there, which mm-hmm. means that you can what well, I guess that's a USB out that will turn whatever you're switching into the computer. Currently, I have my box, and then I have another um, $200, $250 um, intensity shuttle USB 3 that the box plugs into to bring it into the computer to do what you see here. Mm-hmm. So this eliminates a lot of that and kind of folds it in. And it's running like the same kind of software that I'm used to on the higher end with things. So yeah, you could. it's not easy using this software <laughs> we've done some picture in picture and it's not like in wirecast i could just pull in another source bring it over here but that's multiple things coming into the computer and you know it offloads multiple cameras you know that's one big thing because we used to have all those webcams plugged into a computer when we used to do this show that meant that computer had to always process all of those webcams and offload that on the cpu the gpu and we would have problems mm-hmm. like we have significantly less problems since there's a box down there that handles that right mm-hmm. so um it's the atem mini it's uh, around 300 dollars. it is hard to get i keep seeing it with like one left and there's like somebody selling it for a hundred dollars more on amazon like uh black magic's like their yields are kind of low because this is professional hardware Mm-hmm. And if somebody like really wants to jump on it, um, a lot of people do, and it, it could be a little while before you get one. So something to eyeball there. Um, the ATEM Black Magic Mini, uh, definitely, definitely worthwhile, worth a look. So uh, let's see what else we got here. Well, first, before we get to some more stories, I want to give a shout out. Hey, we do some podcasting here, but we do some other production. Or sometimes we send Matt over here out <laughs> to get some some events. Uh, Sidekick Media Services from Sporting Events Music Video Production. Just working on another one now with our friend Nick Ivan. Uh, to conferences and everywhere in between, the team at Sidekick Media Service has you covered as a sidekick to your superhero project. What next big thing can we help you with over at SidekickMediaServices.com to get a little glimpse into some of the projects we've worked on over the last several years there all right uh chilla you still have your google glass that i that i traded you for um for a penny i do for it was more than a penny it was a a pebble and an apple three i think we are now all of these things are absolute it, yeah it was a pebble an ipad three and, and like a hundred dollars <laughs> to sweeten the pot so i'm just like deal um that's cool i paid fifteen hundred dollars for it so i felt i felt like i got a bit out of it well unfortunately google is ending support for the explorer edition of glass and i think this is on the heels i guess related story uh the uh sergey and larry are out at google they are retiring from google officially and i think everybody's killing all their glory projects with this so uh it's rolling out a final update for the wearable and then that's going to be it When's the last time you picked that thing up? Christopher was. Hmm? It's probably been a while. It's probably mm-hmm. been. The whole thing was you three. were taking you were taking pictures. I think it was three years. It was okay. more of the. Your it was it was back to the days of you're holding a kid, you're trying to hold a bottle, you're trying to do a mm-hmm. bunch of stuff, and you just want to be able to. Be able to hands free some stuff. Okay, glass, take a picture, like all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. 
I mean, that's back when the Xbox, I mean, my entire world revolved around Xbox controls being voice based. I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Xbox pause, Xbox mute, Xbox whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's probably been two and a half, three years. He was probably. I can't remember if he was two or three at Christmas time when the last time I used it. Jeez. But it was good. We had, I mean, we, we did some stuff with it. We did some video with it, and it was a nice device for, what, 2013, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so they, and they, do, they did release a, an Enterprise Edition in 2017. They are going to continue to support that version. Um, I don't know if it's easy for you to acquire one at this point. Oh, I'm sure there. it's secondary market. Yeah, it's secondary and market. They're not going to support it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of driven off the app and the device, so... I'm guessing it'll work as long as you have it configured and it's mm-hmm. whatever. Sure, can continue, um, but they've already killed off like Hangouts and things like that. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing. Like I really like the idea of Hangouts being a part of that. You know, I mean, we we plan to play with that a little, but I like the idea that I guess our phones will do this now. But you could go to an event and POV stream that into like this show, mm-hmm. right? Like we we kind of played with that a bit. Um, it's like like those kinds of things. So. I don't know. It's an end of an era there, but I mean, it really kind of begot like now you have your Google home to talk to instead of this and, and everything. Like most of the things other than that camera being on your face and a screen being on your face have kind of been replaced. Yeah. And I, I liked it mainly for the, the camera aspect. I know um, having the cards there, caller ID, mm-hmm. current temperature or, or weather forecast, that kind of stuff was cool. For me, it was more of, and I feel like, even Google had for a while the camera you could put up in the corner of the room and would randomly take pictures for events. Um, the amount of wearable cameras and everything else we have today. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's any screens yet that are kind of in the corner of your peripheral vision and view. No. Um, that we can find, but I'm sure it's only a matter of I say, time. I say a lot of it. Um, I only mentioned smartwatches. I feel like it was a precursor to that for at least my use base. Mm-hmm. You know, like have the messages right there. It's like, well, it's now it's glanced down my rinse, and it's the same thing. It's taken off the phone. So tell me about Ma- my Mac Mini getting turned into a workstation. Man, I wish my old Mac Mini still worked. So did you see this? So this is this is definitely for the new Mac Mini only because mm-hmm. um, it's based on the ports on the back of the device. Okay. Um. Did I give you the... No, no, because I didn't stop by yet. Because you didn't stop by. Um, so it's, it, I'm sure the Mac Mini slides into this and all of the ports in the Mac Mini slide into like port replicators in the back. But it, it turns... It's a docking station for a Mac Mini. Which kind of kills the idea of the size of a Mac Mini. Right, but it allows you to add to... So we're just, we just got off talking about the, the Mac Pro, mm-hmm. right? Um, it allows you to add two graphics cards. Oh, and an SSID or SSD drives to a Mac Mini, mm-hmm. which a Mac Mini is kind of the sealed. Hey, you get what you get, mm-hmm. and don't fret about it. Um, so, I mean, if you look at some of the benchmarks um, of, you know, they they put two Vegas in here. <laughs> um, the the benchmarks there's two PCIe expansion slots um and then i think there's slot for um four um SSDs and it's using actually like the the memory stick the M2 mm-hmm. flash so it's not like you're putting an SSD drive in there it's more of insert the the chip and screw it in kind of thing um, it has an SD card reader um, and additional ports in the back. Damn, that thing launched fast in the video. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, so I, I thought it was a pretty cool concept. Um, they're looking to raise 660 k by January 19th. Mm-hmm. It's a Kickstarter. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see what... The- the Kickstarter price nine hundred and nineteen dollars, which will be thirty five percent off. Hmm. So check that out. That's a that's a. I mean, if you want to put more money in the graphic cards than like the CPU, I guess that would make sense for you. Mm-hmm. 
um, to adapt. Hey, I got a Mac Mini and I could use more power. Like that, that seems like the use case for something like this. Like for the um, so here's their version of a full tilt option. If you pledge three thousand four hundred and seventeen dollars, you get the docking station, two Radeon RX fifty seven hundred fifty seven hundred XT cards, four two terabyte SSD drives for a total of eight terabytes, and they'll get a TNMA. Hmm. Well, while we're on like uh, uh, computers and operating systems, tell me what Microsoft and Linux are doing. They're playing nice together again. So, a lot of the news has been, hey, we're bringing the Linux subsystem to Windows. You're going to be able to load a Bash shell. You're mm-hmm. going to be able to load Windows, different flavors. Some pretty of heavy developer stuff, yeah, basically. Definite heavy developer stuff. Um, today, they announced, or it finally hit, uh, I think, preview. Um, they delivered the Microsoft Teams Office application to Linux. So it's the first Office app. So there's like Slack for Office, yes. right? Um, so I've used a number of um, persistent chat applications, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, All the way back to Google Wave. All the way back to Google. <laughs> um, even for some current gen ones, I will say Slack is is pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Um, the teams, the way Teams organizes things, maybe just makes more sense in my head, mm-hmm. and the way I track things. The other thing, the way, even on mobile, that. I'm not a huge fan of the way Slack kind of indents and hides replies and whatnot. Um, and I have to drill into a conversation and then drill back out. I presume your work life is, is has a little more deeper Slack uh, uh, integration than our Sorgatron media one does. Yeah, <laughs> And we don't, we, so we're, we don't use either right now. Um, yeah. We have to use something that's on premise mm-hmm. um, with, and not cloud-based. Um, so it's you can only imagine what that's like, but um, kind of like uh, a, a one one group I work with is using Riot as an yeah, on server. Yeah, we were talking about Riot. Yeah, yeah we were yeah. talking about Riot, and you can kind of build your own server, roll your own. Yeah, yeah. Um, through like a matrix or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, not the matrix. Let me just clarify that right now before you hear that in the chat room. If you provide us with five hundred dollars on Patreon, we will come and install the matrix <laughs> at your office. <laughs> yes. Um, not the matrix, but an a matrix. Um, no, but yeah, kind of, kind of that concept. Um, from a regulated perspective, we have to be able to capture conversations and keep mm-hmm. retain them for certain periods of times and whatnot. I, I really like Teams. I'm very impressed, based on the fact that it can do, and it's an all in one, right? It's not like Slack. You can plug in Zoom, or you can plug in WebEx, or you can plug in this, that, or the other. This is all Microsoft. Things this is all Microsoft all the way through. So you're getting the new Skype. So you're getting voice, video, mm-hmm. screen sharing, um, all in one nice broadcasting, uh, file sharing. The whole the whole shebang in one one application and. I will say they've done a pretty good job of thinking through the user experience. So um, pretty darn cool. Awesome. Well, let's look at a couple of fun ones here on the way out the door. Uh, first of all, Coca-Cola is using OLEDs to light up Ray and Kylo Ron's uh, lightsabers on the bottles themselves. Oop, I didn't click the thing first. Yeah, but it's only in like Singapore, right? Oh, man, I'm not going to see these on the IGA across the street. There's, It's something where you what like have the to... Hell? Not only that, but you it's like only in Singapore you have to do something to unlock a certain code and then go what? to like your local seven eleven and turn the code in and then they give you the bottle. What? They're not even on the shelf? Uh, from I, my, I guess I guess from an early thing that I read and I, I I think I may have read it before it was like while before they were on shelves. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, from what I read it's like a limited edition, high end exclusive in a small country far, far away. And, and, <laughs> Small country far, far away. A, far, a small country far, far away that only my pro wrestling friends have gone to. Yeah. So if they're <laughs> so, over there. <laughs> well, I don't think anybody's going lately, but if they were, I'd be like, hey, uh, hey, uh, can you get me one of these bottles? Are you going to Disneyland and you can get your hands on the grenade 
the, like the thermal detonator Coke and spray. Yes. Uh, pick those up. Those were going for like $8 an empty bottle. At no way. Steel City Con over the weekend. Really? I almost bought them both. Jeez. This is why I don't go to Steel City Con because I'm not getting out there unscathed with my wallet. You're lucky you get real Coke at the IGA and not the knockoff. Yeah. <laughs> real, real sugar Coke in the bottles. They got plenty of it. Not running out. Um, also, Mario Maker. I love the crazy stuff they come up with in Mario Maker. But uh, there's some new additions. You remember uh, Zelda 2? How that was like a 2D affair way back in the day in like, you know, 1987. Mm-hmm. Um, they added Zelda 2 Maker to Mario Maker. I don't know why this site's uh, uh, loading so weird. But uh, yeah, they're, they're doing an update um, to it to add elements of Zelda <coughs> and uh, Zelda 2. And you can create some Zelda 2 inspired levels as part of this. You can pick up potions. There's a link. And it only works apparently in the 8-bit Super Mario 1 edition um, graphicalized. Like I know you can kind of like swap up, you know, two three four and so on right Mm -hmm. so um that is a cool addition there i don't know why i have this on you i don't know what's going on here oh there there now we'll show the people the the graphics so some cool things going on there um also i think i had one more here that was kind of fun uh oh no less fun but more just hey more tv for you to watch uh you still use plaques i know you were you were back in the day weren't you i was way back in the day um I think that was back when it was like X. It was kind of the built into XBMC. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not currently, and I'm thinking about. So I have a small farm of computers in the basement um, <laughs> that are looking for you either see a, them moseying and eating grass. Yeah, either my either head. looking for a new home, a new project, or the scrapyard mm-hmm. or the spice mines of Kessel. Um, so. I may actually build like a, I think they can make, you can build like a, it's like a NAS installation of like Linux where mm. it's pretty much just a home NAS and, and, um, and it runs Plex and a couple other things. Almost like you can load Plex onto a Synology NAS. Um, I'm thinking about doing that with, I can get one of the big towers and get a ton of drives in there and stripe them mm-hmm. and kind of make it like a backup or central repository for stuff. Um, I may go that route, but I got to figure out. I literally have, I mean, it probably is over 18 inches high of drives that I need to go. That's one of my Christmas projects. I mean, but they're all different. It's like there's laptop hard drives. There's the desktop How hard do you drives. you just have the drives? Are you, pull, are you pulling them when you get rid of them? So sometimes I, I would pull them when I get rid of them. I would pull mm. them when other people like were getting rid of something and they're like, do you want this computer? Yeah. And I'd be like, I'll take the drive. Like I, I know. Yeah. I, yeah. So because what I used to do is I used to get like large towers and actual PCI cards that you could plug in and would provide additional dr- drive mm-hmm. connections. Mm-hmm. And and I just, would install like Windows NT4 or like the lowest end of anything <laughs> that I could get. And I would just stripe all the drives so they showed up as one drive letter. Okay. And then I would just dump tons of crap on it and make it just like a storage wow. array. Wow. Um, so I think I'm going to do that again. Um, I'm also going to build a Windows 10 kinda, machine. I kind of need one of those here. <laughs> I'm going to build a Windows 10 machine. It's probably going to be pretty low end, but it's going to run the um i'm gonna i'm gonna start a bedrock server for minecraft um so like the minimum of that is like you need like a 2.4 gigahertz cpu it doesn't care anything about the gpu because it's just running the server you're not playing the game yeah you need a minimum of it's just it's just a traffic like two or four giga ram yeah um so i think i have an older dell laptop that I'm going to be able to get away with upgrading to eight gig of RAM, throw a small SSD in it and let it sit in the corner and run Minecraft servers. Hmm. While I take an iMac that I found, I'm going to upgrade that to 16 gig of RAM. And so here's the problem. You can't run the latest windows, the latest version of Minecraft server where all of the new clients like the Xbox 
mm-hmm. PlayStation, the Switch, mm-hmm. the iPad. They can't connect to it. You have to run the old Java-based game, which doesn't run across all those platforms. So I need something in the house that we can connect to from all of those different things. So I have to, it's only supported on Windows and Linux. Go figure. Another thing Microsoft took to Linux, but not Mac OS. Um, someone has figured out how to take, I don't know if you've ever heard of Docker um, and containerization. They've built Linux containers that will spin up in like a virtual environment on your machine. So I can actually run multiple servers simultaneously and then I can spin them up, spin them down, back them up, push them in. Like how that, many kids I'm going to run that on the Mac. That's that has, I, and I think I can actually get 32 gig of Ram in that. And it's an old 2011 iMac. Okay. So I can still access the memory from the bottom with the Ooh. screws. Uh, yeah. My 2007 are like maxed out of four. So yeah, I don't know. About I'm reading on OW. Was it o, old other world computing? That while it's wow. touted as maxing at sixteen, it'll actually address thirty-two. Oh. Um, so, so, so all this that you just said, how many, how many Minecraft youngsters are going to get in, into networking and IT based on Cri- trying to figure out servers? Christopher's, I don't probably a lot. Yeah, and I mean Christopher's five, and I know he's not going to get a lot of what we're doing, but his whole thing is like he gets the concept of we're going to take apart a bunch of computers. <laughs> To make one decent computer, yeah, that's primary function is a Minecraft server, and that's all he cares about. So, I'm hoping it'll be but like his in, first kind of. But maybe in five years, he's going to want to figure out how to do that. How himself. to do it himself? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and it's it's actually got me learning about containerization and or, like container orchestration. Wait, so Minecraft is helping you learn things that you can take to your job at big bank international right now 110 wow wow i mean i mean you're going i'm going out and grabbing github repositories pulling stuff down like the anyways the point was plex tv (laughs) sorry (laughs) sorry that was that was a hell that was a very good sidebar um plex is actually um they're going to launch our own free movie and tv streaming service for within plex yeah and they're going to have like the ad based of course but I think they're going to have the first Game of Thr- Thrones season on there. Are they they're, they're, really? Yeah, yeah, they're getting some. They're getting some bigger named content than you would think. Wow! Um, from from what I was reading, well, I'm let's pretty see. Sure what do they have them. listed here? Let's see. They got an ad. I'm afraid to play this because of copyrights. But just looking at this, I mean, it's. I mean, there's some. Uh, they got Terminator, Team Wolf, right stuff. Yeah, they got some pretty Rain Man. I mean, at least like older stuff. But I mean, this this looks like a crackle list to me. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? But not owned by everything owned by Sony. Uh, Lord of War with Nicolas Cage. Um, is that the usual suspects I'm seeing? So yeah, I mean it, it's it's pretty decent. So I guess if you're into Plex, you get and this is you know, hey, it's there. It's like turning on the TV on a on a um, mm-hmm. Sunday afternoon, right? You know, I I, I just want want some something to watch. So, Chilla, that's my name. We come to the end. I feel like I've done two podcasts tonight. We, we kind of have. We, well, I guess we kind of have. Yes. We did like a like a. Like one and a half. One and a half podcast tonight. With with the Switcher Straight. reboot. What's that? With a Wirecast reboot. With a Wirecast reboot, in the, if for good measure. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, at Chilla on the Twitter. Yeah, and hey, if, and I know we got a couple more episodes before the end of the year, but if you are playing Overwatch on the Switch or on the Xbox and are interested in playing with me, um, hit me up because the winner um, event is going on winter wonderland and i will be running after i think it's it's a three-week event if you win at least nine games in the week um you get a bunch of stuff um there's a lot of fun ones there's a yeti there's a snowball fight there's all kinds of cool stuff so if you're playing let me know um reach out to me on the twitters and i'll get a hold of you with whatever handle on whichever machine you're playing on but i, I play primarily on Primarily on Switch, followed up by Xbox One, and I don't have it running on um, Windows anywhere, but yeah, hit me up. Awesome. Go check it out again. We got uh, Pittsburgh Current will be doing their podcast, I believe, this week and next. Next week, we'll be having our end of the year edition where we get to see how we did on our predictions for 2019 and looking at them. Maybe we'll look back. I heard one podcast already screwed up trying to look back on the decade and 
t- spend an hour on 2010. Uh, so <laughs> hopefully we don't fall to that with our, our methods. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. So uh, go check it out. We'll see you guys here live next week uh, with uh, the end of the year crew. And like I said, we got at least one special in the can for you over the holidays. So we won't keep you hanging for two weeks here. But we're going to take a damn break. That's for sure. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.